Hello, welcome to another video. It's another limit problem and this one appears to be written in a language not everybody understands. So this is Trig and uh, how do I know even how to evaluate by plugging in? Remember when you have a limit problem you just plug in whatever finite value you have. The only time you don't plug in is when you have infinity. Okay, so, but you always try to plug in. So what would cosecant pi over two be? So unless you really remember your trick very well, this might be confusing, but I can help you out. Okay, so remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So we know that sine pi over two is one. So the reciprocal of one is one. So we know this is gonna be one. If you plug in pi over two here, it's gonna be three times pi over two, um, or 270 degrees, and we know that at that point, tangent is undefined. Okay, so, um, so you have one times infinity. Down here you have secant x, which is one over cosine, but we know the cosine of pi over two is, is zero. So the reciprocal of zero is undefined, which is infinity. So this case is infinity over infinity. You can't do anything with it. This is the indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. You cannot even use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so this is a case where you have to understand your trig simplification and rewrite this in a language you understand. And the language you understand is sine and cosine. So do yourself a favor, rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine and see if you can make any sense of it. So now we're gonna take the limit as x goes to pi over two and we write this only in terms of sine and cosine because that's something everybody can relate with. So we're gonna write cosecant as one over sine x multiplied by tan three x is gonna be the sine of three x divided by the cosine of three x. And then we're gonna divide all of this by one over cosine three x. So the way this is, we can, should we plug in again? Well, it's gonna be the same thing because we haven't moved anything around. But now we can see that this cos, sorry, cosine x. So we can see that this cosine can go up here, okay, or just multiply the top and bottom by cosine x. And you see that there's a cosine x here, a cosine x here, this gets rid of this. So this line can now be rewritten as the limit as x goes to pi over two of, this cosine goes up, so um, we can put the cosine actually here. So we can write it as cosine x over sine x multiplied by sine three x over cosine three x. Okay, let's check now and see if we can plug in pi over two. So cosine pi over two is zero, sine pi over two is one. So this is zero over one, which gives us zero. Nice, okay? So we have zero here. Let me just put it here, zero. Then we're gonna be multiplying it by, if the next one gives us a zero or a one, as long as it's not infinity, we're good. So let's put pi over two here. Sine three pi over two is negative one, okay? So we're gonna have negative one. Cosine three pi over two, uh, that's zero. So negative one over zero is negative infinity. And so zero times infinity is another indefinite form. So the original was zero over zero, indefinite form, zero over zero, sorry, infinity over infinity. And then this one is giving us zero times infinity. That's another indefinite form. You cannot use L'Hopital's rule at this point in definite form. What else can we do? So for those of you who think that L'Hopital's rule will always save you, you see, you still have to do your simplification because until you get zero over zero, you cannot use L'Hopital's rule. Your answer is going to be incorrect. Okay, so mm, what can we do? At least we know this is simple enough, but this can we simplify this? Yes. And this is where you have to recall your trig identities very well. At least you should know um, what your cosine or sine, your double angle and your triple angles are because sometimes that's the only thing that would save you. And if you don't, just go from scratch 
and use your double angle formula or angle sum see this as sine 2x plus x and then use your sine 2x combine it with sine x and you're going to come up with this so i'm going to write the identities for this and for this and you see how similar they are and you don't need to memorize a lot so we're going to write this as the limit as x goes to pi over 2 of cosine x over sine x multiplied by because this is sine always says sine comes before cosine so this is going to be 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x that's what this is guess what the bottom one is this comes here and this goes here okay and it's still minus but you just change this to cosine so this is going to be 4 cosine cubed x minus 3 cosine x see how similar they both are so you're not really memorizing a lot sine is the first one the other one so it goes from 3 to 4 for sine and then from 4 to 3 but the the number stays with this just just see how it goes 3 is always alone okay now we can factor out sine from the top factor out cosine from the bottom okay and this cosine will cancel one of the cosines here one of the signs here will cancel this sign so this will be gone you just have a simple expression left here this is equal to the limit as x goes to pi over 2 of if we this is going to be cosine x over sine x multiplied by if we factor this out we're going to get um, sine x multiplied by 3 minus 4 sine squared x and under it we're going to have um, take out one cosine cosine x multiplied by 4 cosine squared x cosine squared x minus 3 and that's what we've got so this is the limit as x goes to pi over 2 now what do we cancel this sign can cancel this sign this takes this out and this cosine takes this one out so what do we have left we have just 3 minus 4 sine squared x divided by 4 cosine squared x minus 3 okay now you see how L'Hopital's rule has become useless now because if I plug in my pi over 2 it becomes 3 minus what is this you said this expression actually is sine x squared okay so maybe I should write it one more time so you see that this is going to be the square of sine x Okay, that's the actual interpretation of this expression. And now let's try and plug in pi over 2. Our answer is going to be 3 minus 4 times, what is sine pi over 2? It is 1, 1 squared, divided by 4 times, what is cosine pi over 2? It's 0, so it's 0 squared minus 3. So our answer is 3 minus 4, that's... 3 minus 4 divided by 0 minus 3. What does that give us? It tells us we got negative 1 on top, negative 3 under. So negative 1 over negative 3. So the answer to this is basically 1 third. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.